until now, we've talked about things such as user goals and things that are associated with those user goals in terms of what types of users you may have. So things such as what are personal goals, what, you know, what are the goals of a particular organization, and those sorts of things. What we're going to focus on today is we're really going to focus on the users themselves. And specifically, the level of technical competency of various types of users. And this is really important because you need to really think about where are your users in terms of their competency when you are designing an interface. In general, we think of users as either beginners, intermediates, or experts. And you, you can't think of it more on a uh, continuum. So when you are designing an interface for a particular product, and let's say you're designing an interface where you know that you are going to have a wide range of users. So you are going to have some users who are beginners, in other words, those who ha have very little experience or understanding either of technology or of the specific domain that your product falls under. Intermediates, which as we will discuss is usually most people, most individuals in our society technologically would be considered intermediates, as well as experts. These are the, those individuals who really know a great deal. So for example, very often, you as information technology individuals are experts. So you are in a smaller percentage and category. So the question is, how do you design for different levels of expertise? Yes. No, go ahead. Oh, uh, you just have to wear everything as a, be a beginner. You think you should have everything wear everything's a beginner? Yeah. What? Well, that's one one option. What do you think the positives and negatives of that would be? Well, the positive of that is that you don't have to worry about being making it very complicated. By the same time, the design has to be focused where it has to be very simple, and people might be cut off by it. Like more effort has to go into making it simple. Hold on one second. Oh, thank you. Sorry, thank you. Yes? I think uh, what I would say, cons in that would possibly be uh, insulting the more advanced user. That is definitely a con you need to worry about. You're gonna, what, what happens if you are insulting the more advanced user or even an intermediate user? Now, one of the things we're going to do in a few slides from now is we're going to talk about how beginners tend to act, how intermediates tend to act, and how experts tend to act. Because it is very, very different. And while we're talking about this, what I want you to think about is how you tend to react when you run into some of the issues that we're going to talk about. So let's take a look at trying to find the right balance between let's say the two extremes, beginners and experts. Because now you're really talking about two very different types of users. So beginners. Beginners tend to experience days of frustration trying to new, learn a new product. They very often will experience little bouts of disappointment where they don't get things immediately. So one of the questions is, OK, with beginners, how can we make it easier for them, just as your fellow classmate uh, mentioned? We don't want beginners just to up and leave. We want them to be able to learn the product. On the other hand, experienced users can become very frustrated when they have a program that treats them like they're a beginner. What is wrong with this stupid program? I'm not an idiot. OK, why do I have to go through three menus to get to what I want? So things such as that. <laughs> yes? By beginner, you mean like they're, they're walking your hand, or is it simple? Beginner or simple? Um, not, well, beginner is not always necessarily simpler. Because I think what you were focusing on was keep it as simple as possible, yeah. which is absolutely true. What I'm talking about with the beginner is someone who is completely clueless. Or programming is holding your hand the entire time. Yes, exactly. 
So one of the things we have to remember is that when you think of the leap from beginner to expert, it's kind of like jumping off a cliff. It's very difficult, it's very rapid, and it's certainly not very pleasant. So what is it that we do to try to deal with this? Well, one of the things that is definitely to our advantage in this case is that very rarely do you have a user who jumps from being a beginner to an expert. Most of the time what you have is you have beginners who become intermediates, or what are called perpetual intermediates. Let's see if this thing has, aha, there we go. Perpetual intermediates. So you want to remember most users are intermediates. So if you're a beginner at a program and you're working to learn it, how long do you think you're going to remain a beginner? Not very long, right? Right, so eventually you become an intermediate. So experience level of people performing an activity tends to follow what's called the classic statistical bell curve. How many of you have heard of that? A couple of you. Well, fortunately, I put some nice, pretty pictures. So the, the, this, this is the classic bell curve, both of these, actually. This is just an example. And what you find is that when you read a lot of scientific journals, for example, and you read a lot about how we tend to perform as humans, you'll find a lot of our capabilities fall along this bell curve. So. If you want to look at, at, at the specific statistics and what percentage of individuals fall within these various areas, you can go ahead and look at this one. But let's take a look at the simpler one here, where we have beginners, intermediates, and experts. So if you have some sort of measurement, some sort of test, for example, that measures what level of technological understanding and capability do you, your users tend to have, either in general or with a particular product, what you find is that the majority of people will fall somewhere along here, right in the middle. And you'll find that you don't have that many individuals that are, are beginners. You don't have that many individuals that are experts. And people tend not to stay here very long, especially, uh, especially the beginners. Now, one of the things that is true of different types of users that is also true in many other areas of science, as well as many other areas of human capabilities, is that you have a tendency to gravitate towards the mean. Have any of you heard that? Does anyone know what that is? Average. Yes, average. So those individuals who are on the, oops, those individuals who are on the extremes over time are more likely to gravitate towards the average, towards the middle. So beginners tend to become intermediates. And over time, experts tend to also gravitate towards intermediates, unless you are continually trying to keep up your skills. Does that make sense? So you want to remember, beginners, don't stay beginners very long. And most of your users are going to be intermediates. So who do you think you want to primarily focus your designs for? Intermediates. And why do you think that is? Because the majority of people are intermediates. That's right. So here's an axiom that you should remember. Again, this is from your uh, Thagard textbook. Nobody wants to remain a beginner. Important to remember, right? Seems kind of obvious. Do you know of anyone who wants to remain a beginner? What happens if someone remains a beginner? How do they feel? Yeah, they feel kind of dumb. They feel kind of stupid. Now, if you're, someone's using your product and they continually feel stupid, do you think they're going to continue to use your product? Very, very unlikely. So you want to remember, beginners will either become intermediates or they will abandon the product. How many of you have gone to a website 
that has been so difficult to use that even as experts you can't figure it out and you just decide, oh, I'll go somewhere else. Have you experienced that? Yes. All of you have nodded. How many of you sit there and still try, keep trying to figure it out? Okay, so you guys got guys nodding, nodding also. <laughs> so you can think of it that way. When you have something that is so difficult to use and frustrating, if you cannot figure it out or you can't get it to work in a manner that is easier for you, you're going to abandon it. And of course, if your product is abandoned and you don't have users, then that product is going to fail. Another thing with beginners, remember, nobody wants to remain a beginner, is that you, if you add some cumbersome tools that continuously remind your user that they're ignorant about things, that's a problem. We've talked previously about uh, the little uh, clippy guy in previous versions of Microsoft Office, right? How intelligent did you feel when Clippy kept coming into your face and saying, oh, obviously you need help writing this letter? Right? It's not only annoying. So what, you know, what, what, is, what is this program telling me? I don't know how to write a letter. Not that dumb. So you want to make sure that you provide appropriate tools for your users. So remember, a well-balanced user interface devotes most, but not all, most of its efforts to satisfy the perpetual intermediate. But again, you want to keep in mind. You want to focus on the perpetual intermediate, but you have to, you have to also remember you don't want to offend your beginners, and you don't want to offend your experts. Remember, no one wants to be dumb. No matter how little knowledge they may have, have of something, they don't want to feel dumb. Now, what is the main issue with this? Most developers are experts in their product. Think about it. If you are writing code for a product and you are creating the functionality for that product, do you think that you know more than the average individual about how that product works? Yes. So let's say you are writing a component of a product that helps calculate various aspects of a accounting software package, accounts receivable, for example. So you've written the code that tells you where those calculations go, how those calculations are, are uh, done when it's stored to the database, all of those sorts of things. So you have a much more intimate understanding of this program than even most of your expert users who are not developers. So remember, you are experts. Problem is, many developers tend to create interfaces that are suitable only for experts. After all, it's easy for you to use. It makes sense kind of figure, well, eventually the, other, the uh, other users will get there, right? <laughs> I'm assuming they're smart. So they'll figure it out. <laughs> Who can think of an example of where this is not such a good idea? When you're an expert. When you're an expert and you're designing an interface. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. When you're an expert, you, you know how it works, so you can't just assume someone else will also think. That's correct. Can you think of a particular product where you've seen that? I'll give you a hint. You have to look at it in this class. <laughs> in my case, well, I work with the cigarette, so everybody wants to, in this case, want an Android phone. But nobody, so not everybody knows how the, the phone works. So everybody come to the store again to ask me, how can I register my email, or how can I go through the phone? I don't think it's always uh, it's, it's slow to for the kit, for the keypad, and whatever. 
All right, so everyone wants an Android phone because it's really cool, right? It does, does all these cool things, but apparently the interface is not <coughs> designed for your average individual. It's really cool. It does a lot of things, and they assume if you're getting this really cool advanced product, you're going to know how to use it, except it's so cool that everybody wants it. Yeah. So again, you want to focus more on your intermediates. Anyone else? I'll give you another example. Of course, I was referring to Moodle, <laughs> which I know we all love. <laughs> but I will actually give you an example of something very similar to Moodle that, in my opinion, is actually a little worse, which is Blackboard. How many of you have used Blackboard? OK, so a number of you have used Blackboard. How many of you have? had to use Blackboard not just as a student, but as some form of instruction, or where you actually need to communicate with other individuals as a team leader. No one. Well, in Blackboard, they have, just like in Moodle, a lot of capabilities that can help you do things such as calculate grades, have weighted means, and those sorts of things. The problem is, is that in order to do those things, you go, you have this interface, nice little interface that tells you, all right, go here, and you know, this is how you write the code to be able to calculate your grades. So your average user goes to this interface, and guess what they ask you to write? Basic SQL. <laughs> Now, how many non-IT people are going to be able to do this? Not very many. In fact, what some of you may not be aware of is that I also teach for the psychology department. And in that department, in some of the courses, they use Blackboard. So I taught a course that they were using Blackboard in, and we had a specific way where they wanted us to calculate grades, and I was told, now you have to bring it into Excel, and then you have to create the calculation in Excel and upload it. It's not possible to make these calculations in Blackboard. They were very surprised when I gave them the SQL code to make those calculations. Because they are perpetual intermediates. They are not going to understand SQL no matter how basic it is. Now, on the other hand, what type of interface capabilities do you think a, a marketer or a salesperson is going to want for a particular product? Do they want an interface that is designed for beginners, intermediates, or experts? And think about what they want to do. Remember, marketers and the salespeople want to sell the product, especially if they are going to sell the product to new clients. So there are my subtle hints. <laughs> Who is the marketer going to focus on? The beginners. So you're a developer. You're used to dealing with other experts, right? You have a tendency to design interfaces, unless you really think about it, for other experts. But you have all this pressure from the sales force and the marketers to design for beginners. So and now what? Now what do you think you should, should do? Do you think you should still just focus on in the intermediates? It's a tough question. The important thing here is you want to look and see still who are the majority of your users. And in general, you're going to find you're still going to want to optimize for your intermediates. Remember, your intermediates tend to be perpetual intermediates. So even if you have a new product that is being marketed to beginners, remember, beginners do not stay beginners very long. They become intermediates. And if you want to keep that market share, if you want to be able to create a product that people are going to continue to use, market, you want to uh, focus, on, again, on...